Hello and welcome to another Lamore in Christ video. Today we're going to be talking about progressive Christianity. What is it and is it good? Is it bad? What does it mean for the Christian faith? If you want to know more about that, go ahead and stay tuned. God is the father that I never knew I had. God simply is everything. God is faithful. God is my strength. God is always the answer. God is a promise keeper. God, God is, is very, very powerful. powerful. God is my wonderful counselor. God is compassionate to me. God is perfect. Love. God is love. You may have a lot of questions about your walk with God, so let's talk about it. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I am Kaitia Lamour, and apparently for the month of July, I'm gonna be doing only <laughs> Lamour and Christ ministry related videos on my Wednesdays and Sundays. If I have other things, I'll pop those in on top of that if I have any bonus content, but I feel a lot of things that the Lord has been talking to me about in the month of June that I was kind of taking a hiatus and getting some clarity on some things that God needed me to do, working on some other stuff outside of this. But anyways, it's just been a lot that's been on my heart, a lot of conversations that I've been having, a lot of things that I've been thinking about and that the Lord has been teaching me and having me view a lot. So this is actually interesting because I was reading in the Bible as I do every day and I came upon this verse that the Lord led me to and I wanted to share it with you all. So let's go ahead and start off in the Bible. I did share this on Instagram and some of my messages for the month of July 2019 actually are coming from some posts that I did on Instagram, messages that the Lord put on my heart. And some people were like, this could be a whole message. This Can you expand upon that? And apparently I am <laughs> gonna do that. So around the 4th of July that we just celebrated, there's a lot of talk about freedom, but what does freedom actually mean? Is freedom doing whatever you want um, as a Christian or is it being able to have freedom in Christ and what is what does that even mean? So there's apparently a form of freedom that the world has that is definitely to do what you want to do but even in some modern Christianity there have been some things that have changed in how people are presenting the Bible. They're questioning a lot of things, which is good to question things that you've been told. It's good to know that you know that you know what the Lord is saying about stuff, but when you're just throwing out things that are in the Bible and questioning if the Bible is even real, if you should use it at all, if it's valid, then that's where we have a problem. So speaking of freedom, this is what has happened for so long, like this is nothing new. People saying, oh, do whatever you want. God loves you, don't judge people, blah, blah. This is not a new message. This has been going on for a long time. So back in the day, um, it was happening. So in 2 Peter 2, starting at verse 18, going all the way through 21, I'm gonna go ahead and read that and I will put it on the screen as well. For they mouth empty boastful words, and by appealing to the lustful desires of the flesh, they entice people who are just escaping from those who live in error. They promise them freedom, while they themselves are slaves of depravity. For people are slaves to whatever has mastered them. If they have escaped the corruption of the world, by knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and are again entangled in it and are overcome, they are worse off at the end than they were at the beginning. It would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than to have known it and then to turn their backs on the sacred command that was passed on to them. So first thing I wanna focus on is this idea of freedom um, that people who are false teaching um, going around, it's like, yeah, 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 like this is freedom, um, you can do what you want, and these are things that are fine to do, but in actuality, like it's saying, you are slaves to whatever masters you. So let's say that the Lord is your master, we serve God. Let's say um, your flesh is your master, you're always going to serve whatever you feel like doing. And that is something that I've seen a lot happening in this progressive Christianity. Having conversations with people about certain subjects. I mean, I'm 
33 years old, so I've been around for a minute. When I was younger, there were certain things in the Bible that were considered sins that nowadays we're questioning those things. We're questioning everything. Is this really a sin? Did God really say this? And what's interesting is this is how we experience the fall of man. Adam and Eve, what did the serpent do in the garden? He had them question the validity of what God said. God said, you can eat anything except for that one thing. And then they're like, did God really, did he really say, did he really say that you shouldn't do that? He doesn't want you to do that because then you're going to be like him and you're going to know everything. So he's basically just trying to hold you back. And that's what I see a lot in when I'm talking about all types of different subjects within the church where a lot of people, if it makes them have to sacrifice their feelings, their flesh, their desires, they're like, did God really did he really say not to do that and there's re interpretation of scriptures there's things where I'm just like how do people get this <laughs> like out of this word so um, this isn't gonna be a whole lesson on progressive Christianity I'm actually gonna link some information below so that you guys can see what is this thing because you may have not even heard of it before this is kind of new to me um, as far as like actual terms I know that there's movements and there are things happening in the body of Christ that I know are not good but as far as the labels that they have I wasn't too sure so I've been actually looking into that to say like is this really what I think is happening and it's like yeah it is so progressive Christianity according to Wikipedia <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and this is gonna be a little bit of a Thing. So I'll link this below too, so you can read the whole thing. So progressive, progressive Christianity is a post-liberal movement within Christianity that seeks to reform the faith via the insights of post-modernism and a reclaiming of the truth beyond the verifiable historicity and factuality of the passages in the Bible by affirming the truths within the stories that may not have actually happened. Basically, we're questioning if the Bible is something that is historically and factually accurate. Does it really say what we think it says? Questioning everything about Christianity, basically. Progressive Christianity represents a postmodern theological approach and is not necessarily synonymous with progressive politics. It developed out of the liberal Christianity of the modern era, which is rooted in enlightenment thinking. Progressive Christianity is characterized by a willingness to question tradition, question tradition, acceptance of human diversity, a strong emphasis on social justice and care for the poor and the oppressed, and environmental stewardship of the earth. Progressive Christians have a deep belief in the central, centrality of the instruction to love one another according to John 15, 17, within the teachings of Jesus Christ. This leads to a focus on promoting values such as compassion, justice, mercy, and tolerance, often through political activism. Though prominent, the movement is by no means the only significant movement of progressive thought among Christians. The concerns of feminism are also a major influence on the movement, as expressed in feminist and womanist theologies. All these things sound kind of okay, right? We're talking about compassion, we're talking about tolerance, we're talking about political activism, caring for the poor, caring for the oppressed, and talking about love one another. And this is something that I've heard a lot, where God loves, don't judge, who are you to judge? You're a hater if you don't accept, if you don't tolerate, if you don't tolerate certain things. But what I've seen happen, and this has happened in a lot of movements, where it started off like we just want equality, we just want people to love one another, we just want people to stop murdering each other, we just want um, violence to stop, we want people to be helped, and there's nothing wrong with wanting to help others. Like obviously, God tells us to do that, to help other people, to love on them, to have compassion. But what I've seen happen is it's turned from this level to going up to like level 10,000 of if you don't agree with people, you're intolerant. If you don't accept them for who they are and believe that God made them a certain way, there's something wrong with you, you're not really a Christian, you don't really love them. But really loving someone is 
letting them know the truth about Jesus Christ, the truth about the Bible, letting them know that, hey, you know what? At the end of the day, all of us, every single person that God created, we're going to face judgment. We're going to have to answer for our lives. We're going to either go to heaven or to hell. If I'm sitting here telling you, you can do whatever you want, how is that loving on you? How is that supporting you? How is that really wanting the best for you? And the article that I'm going to link below, um, what is interesting about a lot of progressive and modern thinking in politics and religion, all that stuff, is the emphasis on how you make people feel. And the problem with that is if we're making decisions out of our feelings, if it's like, I don't want to offend anybody, I don't want to hurt their feelings, I don't want to tell them they're doing something wrong, then literally our flesh is ruling over everything. And in the Bible, there is never, ever a time where the Lord says, go ahead and do what you want according to your flesh. He's always talking about living by the Spirit, living righteously, being holy, following the commands, doing what God calls us to do. But the main thing that is an issue, like I said, is if we question the word, if we question scriptures, take them out of context, make them become something that they're not. And even just that phrase of like, Bible was written by man. Man is imperfect. If we're questioning the entire validity of the Bible, was it really written, inspired by God? Is it real? Did these stories really happen? If the Bible isn't real and half of it is made up, half of it is just to control people, then why are we even believing in it at all? If the Bible isn't real, Christianity is nothing. It means nothing. But if it is real, we need to take all of it, <laughs> all of it, and understand it and study it. And obviously context is very important. There are some people who are like, oh, you're just picking and choosing stuff. How come you're still wearing mixed fabrics? How come you're still eating certain foods? And it's like, well, if you understand the times, like you have to study everything in context. If you understand the times of that day, if you understand these things, you have to look at it at a, a, with an entire full perspective and not just like, oh, we got to do all these 10,000 things. You know, there were times for certain things, but in the entire arc of the Bible, there are certain things that are repeated over and over and over again, what we should be doing, what we shouldn't be doing. But if we're talking about progressive Christianity, something that I also have noticed, and I'll link the article below that has a really good insight on what it is and what the harm in it is, it's centered around how people feel and what they want to do, what offends them, what makes them feel accepted, what makes them feel tolerated. We have to understand that there is no scripture in the Bible that ever says you should live by your flesh, you should do what you want to do. It's always talking about living according to the Spirit, it's always talking about being righteous, being holy, following the commands, and studying the Bible, and being together, like reading the Bible, worshiping together, teaching each other, like learning and being fulfilled by the Word. So if you can cause people to doubt on some things and also appealing to the desires of their flesh like you can do whatever you want to obviously that feels good like if you were going to tell me i could do whatever i want to do and i still get to heaven that's great news that's amazing news like god loves us and so why would there be a hell and there's a lot of things that progressive christianity questions that are just like foundations of the christian faith um, but my main point here today like definitely look into that and see if there's any teachings that you're following that may fall in line with that, anything that you believe that is just like, that's not biblical, go ahead and really read and research the Bible. Make sure you're being careful who you're listening to on the radio, what sermons you're watching on YouTube. Question everything I say, please. Um, learn for yourself. Ask the Holy Spirit. And I do have a few videos like about studying the Bible, where to begin in the Bible, and things like that. But it's really up to you to have a personal walk with Jesus because it is easy for people to be led astray. And even in the scriptures that I was reading where they're saying, it's better if you never knew <laughs> about Jesus Christ rather than coming to know him and then you fall away. And there's a lot of people who are being led to fall away. They're like, I'm on fire for the Lord. Like I wanna know things. And unfortunately they're under the wrong teaching or they start to question things where they're like, Bible ain't real. I don't understand it. This doesn't resonate with me. I don't agree with this, this, and this. 
then you start to fall away and God is like, oh my gosh, like you need to know the truth and the truth will set you free. You will have complete freedom in that. But many people aren't willing to take the time and you have to take the time. You have to make it a critical and important part of your life to say, God, I need to know what you're saying. We live in a world that's continuing to go further and further away from the Bible, even in the Christian faith, further and further away from what the Bible says, and it's becoming normal. So when you are quoting scripture or saying things that's offensive to people, it's divisive to them because they don't want to believe it, or they've been taught something so much that they're like, this doesn't even make sense to me. Like, no, you're wrong. You're saying some new stuff, and like, I don't like it. So it's important um, for us to understand why God calls us to do certain things. It's always for our own benefit and why we need to stand on his word and not be moved by, oh, get with the times of 2019. I can't believe people are still talking about saving themselves from marriage. I can't believe people are still talking about you got to read the Bible when it's, it's translated over and over again and it doesn't even have meaning anymore. It's like you have to make sure that you're standing strong in your faith and research. Look up Christian apologetics where their whole life's purpose is just to continue to talk about um, historically, scientifically, all of that, why the Bible is accurate, why God is real, who Jesus was and what he really did. So like do that research, do yourself a favor because when you keep looking for the truth you're only going to be more built up, you're only going to be stronger in your faith. I've met so many people and even myself where I've done research and I'm just like, I don't know, this doesn't make sense and that doesn't make sense, but the more I actually try to seek out the truth, the more I'm just like, no, nah, this is for real. <laughs> this is for real. Like, this is it. You can't make me think <laughs> otherwise. Like, no, like, I want to know the truth and I'm willing to take the time to find it. And if you're willing to do that too, like, you'll find it. Um, God isn't in a secret place um, hiding from you so that you can't, you know, find him. He wants you to know the truth and he wants to be with you and to guide you through that. So let's go ahead and pray about these things. This kind of filled a little all over the place. I hope <laughs> I was making sense. But yeah, that's the main thing I wanted to talk about um, today is like, just be rooted in the word, be rooted in your faith, understand why you believe what you believe. And let's go ahead and pray and cover this. Lord, I just thank you, Father God, that you are not a man that you should lie. And you're not someone who's just waiting to punish us, but you're also not a God who just lets us do whatever we want to do. Because doing whatever we want is not going to lead us to peace. It's not going to lead us to joy, Lord. It's just going to lead us into problems. So I just thank you, Lord, that you want to be with us forever. And I thank you, Lord, that you want us to know the truth. I pray over those who are um, dealing with questioning and like, is God real? Is the Bible real? We've all gone through that. But I just pray that you help them to have the right people around them, to find the right resources, to, to seek the truth with all of their heart and to not lean on their own understanding so that they can know beyond a shadow of a doubt who you are and that you are real and what you require of them and that they will be bold in speaking the truth no matter if it's culturally acceptable no matter if it makes people feel good but that no matter what they will do what you have called them to do and have that holy boldness boldness that courage that strength to continue to press forward because we need people to be standing firm on the truth so that we know we're not alone we're in this together and i pray all of this in your son Jesus name. Amen. All right, you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I have a YouTube channel. This is it. If you want to subscribe to it, I'm here a couple days out of the week and I'm talking about my life with the Lord and what he's teaching me. I'm also sometimes putting in skits and stuff about hair, makeup and beauty and all kinds of stuff. So if you want to see things like that, go ahead and subscribe. Don't forget to click on that notification bell as well because YouTube might one day decide to notify you that I have uploaded. And also if you want to support this ministry and keep the message of Christ going and help in spreading the good news, I do have merchandise. I'm always wearing it in these Lamar and Christ videos. I have designs on t-shirts, hoodies, bags, wall art, all kinds of stuff, phone cases. So if you want to do that, you can. And also if you want to just straight up donate, I do have a donate button. It is a secure link through PayPal that you can go ahead and donate through down there. And I think that's it for today. If you have any questions, if you have any additional comments, if you have any more resources talking about different forms of Christianity today and what things to avoid or really great preachers who are speaking the word of God, go ahead and share all that stuff. I would love to talk to you guys down there. 
All right then, I will see you in my next video. Bye. So, putty pop pop and a potty pop pop.